ask a person with a scar to tell you the story behind that scar, and you will discover the lessons that they learned. Now, depending on how they frame that story with intention and how you perceive with interpretation, you may also gather secrets from their hero's journey, keys that can unlock you and position you for success. I would like to take you on a journey with me as we revisit the story behind one of my invisible scars, a scar that comes from sexual trauma. Now, wherever you are on the experiential level, my intention is not to tell you a story for the sake of storytelling. It's to invite you to identify and interpret how Influence happens at the micro level of emotions. I want you to ask yourself, how do our emotions inform our actions? And do these actions contribute to or sabotage success? Now, you may wonder, how in the world is she going to get through this with this topic? Well, here's the thing. Even though I have the memory of the pain, the pain of the memory is no longer present because of emotional fluency. So let's jump into the story with me. We're on a beautiful island in the Caribbean. I'm surrounded by crystal blue waters. The sun above is always there to kiss my face. And the trees, they hover and spread their branches so wide they would leave many things hidden and untouched. Hmm. But my days of being hidden and untouched were about to quickly come to an end while playing the game of hide and seek. I was partnered with my neighbor, who was nine years older than me. I was three. <laughs> he was somebody that I always felt safe with, and I had no reason not to trust him. But in those moments of hiding with him underneath the, scroll, the crawl space, something would happen that would violate my childhood innocence and my trust. And this would create a series of ripple effects that would be felt for years into the future. It wasn't until I was five years old that in a conversation with my mother, a warning about good touch and bad touch and what a bad touch could lead to, the way a mom could tell a story to a five-year-old, that is when I would realize that what happened to me had a name, and it was bad. Now, as a five-year-old, I already had an understanding of good and bad, and I made sense of the world from that understanding. But in the exchange between my mom and me, non-verbally though, I would come to the conclusion that I was bad. And this belief would then invite a series of other emotions that left me feeling broken and dirty. And that dirty feeling brought a pain with it that I had never felt before. Now, what is dirty pain? Well, a Texas Back Institute study describes the difference between clean pain and dirty pain, stating that clean pain is what would result from bodily aches and pains. If you're a football player or a parent of a football player, you know everything about clean pain. However, dirty pain is what results from psychological, emotional, and cognitive stress. It was the psychological impact of understanding in context what my mom was saying to me that would cause me to replay these memories over and over again, trying to find a better outcome. And every time, I was left wanting. I would sit and say to myself, like, how did you not know? 
There were times in my developmental years and in my adolescent years that I would be this close to telling my mother that I knew what touch she was talking about. But then I would be reminded that, well, when he asked you if you wanted to play, you said yes. And when it tickled, you liked it. And when it pierced, you stayed silent. So who was I to blame? Myself, him, or me? You know, the thing about trauma is this. It happens in ways that we don't even expect it. A death of a loved one, a betrayal from somebody, an accident, an act of nature that shook your community, being the victim of violence, or even witnessing violence. Something that shook you and left you stunned producing this resistance that you either learn to numb yourself to, nurse, neutralize, or negotiate with. In my book, Thou Shalt Flourish, I describe this as the emotional wound cycle. It is what happens when a person experiences dirty pain that would negatively impact their ability to trust, or they experience fears that inhibit their ability to trust themselves. And I would have to learn to trust myself. But if you ask everybody that I grew up with, they would tell you, Keturah is confident. Keturah is bold. Keturah is audacious. But behind all of that, there was a different story happening. I would experience these events in life that I would call life jolts. You know those things that happen that you're not expecting? That may not even have anything to do with trauma. However, these life jolts would cause me to start feeling this tug in between, tug in between my emotions, tug in between a decision, tug and I did not know what to do with it. But I'm a researcher, so I'm always searching. And I would come across information that would explain exactly what I was going through. The things that I never had a name to put. And I came across this word, emotional fluency. And it just sounded very flowery to me, because I love languages. And I thought, ooh, emotional fluency, what's that? But back to these life jolts. They would create a series of questions that I would start asking myself. Why is it that when everybody is expecting you to be the one, you count yourself out? Why is it? that every time you take two steps forward, it feels like you're taking 10 steps back. And I started wondering, what if the emotions that I was so loyal to were the very same emotions that were keeping me from success? What if on the other side of emotional fluency, was the success I was looking for. Now, I didn't grow up in this state of mind where I thought I couldn't do anything, I couldn't, no, that was not me. In fact, I decided to go into a field of work that spoke exactly to what I had been through as a child. I became a therapist. But you know what? You can't teach what you don't know. And so, along the way, wanting to help people, but realizing, uh-oh, your cup is empty, <laughs> I started doing work. And that would lead me to what I now call the 4A shift. Because as I started working on me, 
I started seeing patterns. I started seeing correlations. You know that tug of war relationship I told you between trauma and trust? It wasn't one that I was having by myself. It's a conversation that's actually happening in much more spaces. In fact, an academic study done by Cambridge suggests that where trauma levels are high, there's a correlation with low levels of trust. And if you want to be successful, you have to trust yourself. So how did I come out of that state? How did I take the mask of confidence off? How did I take the mask of this extroverted person off and be able to just stand like this as me, completely me, with all the imperfections? So I'll share with you. The 4A shift, I want to share it through a framework for you. Imagine yourself, you're walking, you know where you're going, you have all the instructions, all the information you need, but a wind comes and it just heaps up all this dust. And the dust is now getting into your eyes, it's blurring your vision, it's distorting your focus, and you can't see. The dust, the wind, all of these things, that's imagery for the emotional wound cycle, what it does to us, how it throws us off kilter sometimes. But imagine putting on a pair of goggles. Guess what happens? Nothing changes, but everything changes. That is emotional fluency. So I learned it by doing what I would call, like I said, the 4A shift. Easy to remember. Shift your attention. Shift your awareness, shift your alignment, and shift your accountability. Shift your attention. What are you doing? Are you being distracted by the dust? Or are you going somewhere and you realize there are distractions around you? Shift your attention. What could I be doing? Oh, I could put on my goggles. I could ask for help. I could find another way. Shift your alignment. How can I fix it? This is where you go from where you are. See, shift your attention is where you are. Shift your awareness. You recognize, I want to be somewhere else. And when you shift your alignment, that's the bridge that takes you there and shift your accountability. What happens if I don't? What happens if I don't? A consequence that could have ripple effects. My name is Katura Rosado, and I am a tapestry of stories that are impacted by trauma some trials, but certainly triumph. And because of emotional fluency, I discovered that you can turn what was once a problem into a possibility. See an obstacle as an opportunity. And a crisis, that can be the vehicle that catapults you into success. I want to leave you with the words of a saying that I heard from one of my mentors back in 2014. I'm sorry, 2004. Why 2014? Who knows? Your influence, like your shadow, will reach places you haven't been. How are you casting a shadow with your influence? It's your ability to influence yourself, to take inspired action, with clarity of aim. That's what will open up doors of opportunity for you and create a success pathway. No matter what feelings try to deter you or derail you. Because after all, what else is success to a five-year-old wounded girl other than the opportunity to run into her mother's arms, know that she's safe, 
She's loved. She's not bad. And will always be 